Throughout history, many remarkable women have left an indelible mark on the world, including those who dedicated their lives to the arts and philanthropy. From Spain to Scotland, Romania to France, and Russia to Austria, these women played an important role in shaping the cultural and social landscape of Europe. Though they lived in different times and places, they shared a common passion for education, the arts, and charitable causes. Through their efforts, they left a lasting legacy of kindness and compassion, inspiring and influencing generations to come. The Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. Step into the fascinating world of Maria of Austria, a woman whose life was full of intrigue, power, and family ties that spanned two of Europe's most prominent dynasties. Born to Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor and King of Spain, and Isabella of Portugal in Madrid on the 21st of June, 1528, Maria was no ordinary royal. Growing up in Spain with her siblings Philip and Joanna, Maria's life would take a dramatic turn when she married her first cousin, Archduke Maximilian of Austria, at age 20. Maria and Maximilian's union would be marked by power struggles, political maneuvers, and a staggering 16 children, though only about half survived to adulthood. Between 1548 and 1551, the couple acted as regents in Spain during her father's and brother's absence. In 1552, they left for Vienna to live at the court of Maximilian's father, who became Holy Roman Emperor in 1556, after her father, Charles, abdicated the throne in favor of his younger brother, Ferdinand. But Maria's ambitions didn't stop there. She served as Regent of Spain from 1558 to 61, when her brother, now King Philip II of Spain, was absent. In 1564, Maximilian succeeded his father as Holy Roman Emperor, and Maria was now Holy Roman Empress, Queen Consort of Bohemia and Hungary. After her husband's death in 1576, Maria remained at court for six years and wielded her influence to guide her sons. A devout Catholic, Maria's faith played a significant role in her life. In 1582, she returned to Spain, seeking to live in a country without heretics. She moved to a convent in Madrid, where she spent the remainder of her life until her death on the 26th of February, 1603, at the age of 74. At the time of her passing, five of her children were still living. A testament to the strength and endurance of a woman who navigated the complex world of European royalty with grace, tenacity, and unwavering devotion to her family and faith. In the tumultuous times of 13th century Europe, Margaret of Scotland stood out as remarkable. Born in the grandeur of Windsor Castle in 1261, Margaret was the granddaughter of the powerful King Henry III of England, but her fate was tied to the turbulent relations between England and Scotland. At the tender age of four, Margaret was betrothed to the future King Edward I of England, as part of a peace treaty between the two countries. However, fate had other plans, and her life took a dramatic turn when her father, Alexander III of Scotland, suddenly passed away in 1286. Alexander's sudden death was a tragedy for Scotland, and it plunged the country into a state of political turmoil. The king had been riding his horse at night near Kinghorn and Fife when he fell from a cliff and was killed. His death left Scotland without a clear heir to the throne, and the ensuing power struggle led to a series of events that ultimately cemented Margaret's role as a pawn in the complex politics of the time. With no clear heir to the Scottish throne, various factions vied for power, and Edward I saw an opportunity to assert his dominance. He forced the Scottish nobles to recognize him as overlord of Scotland and Margaret's betrothal to Edward I was reaffirmed. Margaret was sent to England to be raised at the English court, far from her Scottish roots. 
but she always remembered her homeland. She was a woman of exceptional intellect, culture, and piety, and her musical talents were renowned. She composed some of the most beautiful pieces of music of her time, and her legacy lives on to this day. Despite her accomplishments, Margaret's life was not without its challenges. Her marriage to Edward I was purely political, and she suffered greatly under his infidelities and mistreatment. Nevertheless, she persevered, and her three children, including her son Edward, who later became Edward II, were a testament to her strength. Margaret died in 1317, but her legacy as a remarkable woman and a symbol of challenges faced by women in the medieval world lives on. She was a complex, fascinating figure who defied expectations and left an indelible mark on history. Isabella, Duchess of Lorraine, was an exceptional woman who led a fascinating life. Born in 1400 to Charles II, Duke of Lorraine, and Margaret of the Palatinate, she was their eldest daughter and heir apparent following the death of her brothers. Isabella received a first-rate education and was renowned for her quick wit and ability to make tough decisions in difficult situations. In 1420, Isabella married René of Anjou to unite Lorraine and Bar, and the couple went on to have ten children, though not all survived into adulthood. Isabella became Duchess of Lorraine in her own right in 1431, and in 1435 she became Queen of Naples through her marriage to René. When her husband was imprisoned, Isabella ruled Naples and his dominions in France as regent for three years, demonstrating her impressive political acumen. Isabella appointed her eldest son as governor general in Lorraine in 1445 so she could retire. She died on the 23rd of February, 1453, at the age of 53. Her daughter, Margaret, married Henry VI of England and became a major participant in the English Wars of the Roses, adding yet another interesting chapter to Isabella's remarkable story. Additionally, Isabella was a patron of the arts and played a crucial role in the development of the Renaissance in Northern Europe, commissioning many works of art and architecture that are still admired to this day. Elizabeth of Weed, also known as Carmen Silva, was a fascinating woman and accomplished writer who became the Queen of Romania when she married King Carol I in 1869. Here's an interesting story about her. Elizabeth was a prolific writer, and one of her most famous works is a collection of fairy tales called Die Drei Grazien, The Three Graces. In one of her stories called Der Kleine Schutzgeist, The Little Guardian Spirit, Elizabeth tells the story of a young girl who is visited by a spirit who protects her from harm. One day, Elizabeth was traveling with her husband, King Carol I, when they were caught in a severe storm. The storm was so intense that it caused a large tree to fall across the road, blocking their way. The king and queen were forced to stop their carriage and wait for help to arrive. As they waited, Elizabeth remembered the story of the little guardian spirit and began to recite it to her husband. As she spoke, the rain began to lighten, and the clouds began to part. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning struck the fallen tree, splitting it in two and clearing the way for the king and queen to continue their journey. The incident became known as the miracle of the thunderbolt, and many people saw it as a divine intervention. Elizabeth was hailed as a miracle worker, and her reputation as a mystic and visionary grew from then on. Elizabeth's literary and poetic works, as well as her advocacy for social and political causes, such as women's rights and the protection of the environment, made her a beloved figure in Romania and throughout Europe. Her influence extended beyond her time as queen, and her legacy as a writer and visionary continues to inspire people today. And that concludes this week in royal history. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to show your love for the show, I'd love it if you'd become a patron over on Patreon. 
You can find the link in the show notes. Until next time, I'm Rebecca Larson. The Tudor's Dynasty Podcast.